Hey everyone, I am really excited to film the first in a series of videos that are going to fall under the title Makeup for Grown Ass Women. And I hope that you can all have a little chuckle over the title and not get too offended over it. There, there was some, there was a reason why I chose that um, title. First being that this is makeup geared towards women of a certain age. And I'm not gonna define exactly what that age is, but those of us who are past the glitter, the sparkle, the extremely bright colors, all those are beautiful and wonderful and I can appreciate them on other people, but um, now that I have reached the advanced age of 40, almost 41, I also appreciate that there is um, maybe a better way to wear makeup when you get to be a certain age, whether you feel um, that that's 25, 30, 35, 40, 70, it's, it's just, that's how I feel. And then the other reason why I called it makeup for grown ass women is because I want it to be a little tongue in cheek. Like this is makeup we're talking about. It's not rocket science or brain surgery or the Middle East peace accords. And so we shouldn't take it too seriously. Um, this is going to be a longer video, I think, because I have a lot of information that I want to get out to you. So, um, Right about now, there's gonna be an annotation popping up either here or here, saying if you wanna skip ahead to the actual advice part of this video, to click on that. Um, but if you wanna stick around and hear a little bit about why I chose to do this and what the series is gonna be like and sort of the administrative stuff, then by all means stick around and um, let's get on with it. So I'm gonna do a bunch of videos. Today's video, I think, will be obvious by the title, but it's going to talk about eyeshadows, um, eye stuff in general, and then there'll be one on blushes, lipsticks, foundations, tools, just all sorts of various categories. And the reason that I decided to do this series was because in talking to my friends and people that I encountered, I was shocked at how many people, how many grown ass women, um, don't wear makeup. And it's not because it's a choice, it's because they really don't know where to get started. They never wore it when they were younger and now that they're you know career women or mothers they they they're almost embarrassed to ask because they really don't know now obviously those of you who, the majority of you who watch my videos are obviously beauty fanatics like myself and we have more products than we know what to do with but i'm shocked by the number of my subscribers and friends in real life who watch my videos and don't wear any makeup they just they just like I don't know, watching beauty videos, they find it um, entertaining, amusing, whatever, and they still don't know where to get started. And I have a couple of friends, and I won't embarrass them by naming names, but they really inspired me to um, do a series of makeup videos that are aimed at the average woman who knows nothing about makeup, doesn't know where to start, and, and just wants to dip their toes in the waters of makeup, so to speak. So, um, that's the inspiration for these videos. So I had to think back to when I first started wearing makeup on a regular basis, and I realized that most, and I'm gonna use the word normal, because I think people who watch or make beauty videos, we are not normal. We have taken obsessive compulsive to a whole nother level. But most normal people who wear makeup have maybe one eyeshadow palette that they got at, you know, Lancome or Estee Lauder or Clint, you know, just a little, three a trio or a quad of shadows and they have one or two blushes and maybe three or four lipsticks and that's it. I mean, I remember when all the makeup I own fit into a makeup bag and wasn't that easy. Um, so I wanted to get back to that and recommend palettes that are smaller in nature because while it's easy to recommend the naked palette, someone who's new to makeup would be completely overwhelmed by looking at 12 eyeshadows with so many options to choose from and not specific directions on where to put the lid color and the crease color and all that stuff, it's just too much. So I wanted to keep the options close to four, five shadows. And so that was the criteria that I went with. I also chose to pick really just quote unquote neutral, what am I doing? Neutral <laughs> palettes, which to me are beige, taupe, brown colors. Um, not everyone can wear purple, not everyone can wear shades of navy or gray, but generally speaking, earth tones um, are universally flattering. Of course, there are always exceptions. So that was what I was looking for. And I'm gonna show you everything that I gathered together, and I'm also gonna give a couple of tips on how I think um, these shadows can be worn. So 
One of the most recommended pellets, and I should say everything that I recommend is or mention will be listed by name in the description box. There will be a link next to it um, if you choose to purchase it. Um, using that link, I just want to point out it's in the description box, but I want to be very clear that I do make a small commission um, if you choose to use that link. Those are called affiliate links. By all means, please do not feel like you need to use those. Um, but I'll also mention the video where else you can find them or you can just Google it. But um, I just wanted to be very transparent in how this works. Okay, so I don't want to say it was the number one most recommended palette, but it was way up there and it's one of my favorites as well. It is the um, cover, the mine is so well loved and dirty, but it's the CoverGirl Shimmering Sands Trio. And, um, you know, very easy to get at any drugstore. I couldn't even tell you where I picked mine up. Probably the grocery store. You get them in grocery stores, drugstores, Ulta, anywhere CoverGirl is sold. It's a very easy trio. And what's great about this is that you can wear it in several combinations. For those of you that are a little bit concerned with where do I put all the colors? Just pick one. Um, any one of these colors could be easily taken with a fluffy brush, like um, this is a Sedona lace brush, but it looks similar to the MAC 217. So it's kind of flat and a little bit fluffy too. You just dip that in and any one of these shadows can be worn as one shade all over your lid, up, you know, almost to your eyebrow and you're good to go. Little mascara, out the door. Um, what I also like is that you can use these in combination. I have done pretty much every combination. This on the lid, this in the crease, this in the outer corner, um, this on the lid, this on the lid, whatever. It's, you can't really make a mistake in the combinations here and that's what I like about it. My personal favorite that I think I reach for even more than that and when I am overwhelmed with my choices I reach for this at least once a week and this is the Wet n Wild Walking on Eggshells palette. Again, the colors are very creamy, very easy to work with. I love that um, Wet n Wild even stamps it in here, tells you where to put it, you know, lid, crease, brow bone. Now, I do have a problem with that, and that's why these aren't the perfect palettes, is that over a certain age, this very frosty color is not ideal for your brow bone. It's just too much. Um, when applied with a larger fluffy brush, very lightly, it's good. But I personally prefer nine times out of 10 to have a um, skin tone bone colored matte shadow in the, uh, on the brow bone up here. For those of you that don't know what a brow bone is, um, I'm talking about like right here. So um, these two are great, but not ideal because they are missing a couple of matte shades that I think are very important. Um, so, speaking of matte shades, another two that were highly recommended by all of y'all, especially on Facebook, the first one is the Physician's Formula Quad in Canyon Classics. And I gotta say, one of the things I like most about this is it's really easy to open. You just push it and it pops. Sometimes it's difficult. Um, and I like this because it does have matte options. This is a great brow bone color. This is a great even inner highlight for those of you that's right here. You could just literally take your finger and stamp it and there you go. You have a highlight. Um, and these two colors are great on the lid but I prefer them in the crease area just like if you stick your finger in the part where it goes in the most um, right in there. Uh, the socket if you will. I love these two colors and if you run towards grays that's great. But I also feel like no matter how old you are the lid especially, I feel, I am not an expert, it's personal opinion, um, that there needs to be some dimension and shimmer. You don't want a flat, you don't want an all matte face, you don't want an all flat um, eye look. So I personally think no matter how old you are, and I've been literally stalking women over 40, like staring at all the pretty ladies I see that are wearing makeup in their 60s and 70s, and the most striking women still have, not glitter, but a satin shimmer sheen, something going on on the lid. So for that reason, while I love these matte shades and they're all great, they don't work as a palette for me. I don't feel like it's the perfect palette for a beginner. It works great in combination with one of these because the mattes balance out all the shimmers. But I'm still searching for the perfect palette. So still searching for the perfect palette. I found, I went to Sephora. And Sephora has a couple of brands there that I think get overlooked, and one of them is the Sephora brand. 
And the one that I picked was called Taupe Model, number six. And a couple things that I like about it. On the back, it gives some ideas on where to place the products. So that's nice. And while it's a few more shades than four, it's five, so it's a quint, um, they're all very workable shades. And I really enjoy them. And I use them, I've used this palette quite a lot in the last month. Um, and I would recommend it. It doesn't have that perfect matte crease shade that I was hoping for, but this one right here is pretty close. And I like that it has that extra deep matte color that you can use to deepen the crease if you want to get a little more complicated or use as an eyeliner along your lash line if eyeliner is not your thing. I like that it has a couple lighter colors if you want to wash them all over your lid. I think all of these shades are great. So while wandering around Sephora, I started thinking about the fact that what was the first makeup brand, if I'm starting, a, if I'm going back to basics, what was the first makeup brand that I used when I first started getting into makeup? And it's funny, I really know, I don't talk about these products, I, I only have one product by this company until I bought this, and it's Clinique. We, I mean, for those of us, especially in the United States, I think, that was the first makeup counter experience, was your mom or your girlfriends taking you to the Clinique counter, getting the 123 skincare line, and then getting a quad or something. And so, well, they have some beautiful new palettes that have a ton of neutrals. Again, I was trying to find something that was very small and not overwhelming, and the one I picked is a one, woo, teddy bear. Love this packaging, it's a little mirror. Um, and this is the cool part, and I apologize for blinding you in advance, but look at that here. But can you see the eye and it shows you where the shades go? I think that is such a great idea. And I mean, you can actually hold this thing up to your eye and kind of see where it lines up. It's just, it's wonderful. And then, it, you know, it has the, the colors number, whoops, one, two, three. And when you, so I'm gonna pop off the protective lid. And again, it has four beautiful shades that are very neutral and easy to blend into each other. But the problem is they're all matte. And I'm looking for that shimmer shade. It's like a, it's like the, it's it's like the holy grail. It's impossible to find. So the search continued. Now, the one I like the best, unfortunately, as is always the case, I think, was also the most expensive. Um, and I'm the reason why I am moving away from drugstore. Also, not to say that you can't go to the drugstore and get great stuff, but I also want to believe that women of a certain age have more resources to hand, and if you're only going to buy one or two eye palettes, why not invest in something a little more expensive? So the one palette that I picked up that I'm wearing today, and I, I have to say I love, and I've been wearing it a lot, and I just didn't want to talk about it until I started making these videos, it's a Dior palette, it's a five color palette. This one is called Rosy Tan, and um, it might be pretty close to perfect. So this is what it looks like, and here's what I like about it. Today, I am wearing, what am I wearing? I'm wearing this shade all over my lid up to about the top of my socket. Then I took this slightly lighter matte shade, like a transition color, and blended it towards the top. Then I used um, very lightly, because this can be um, a little shimmery, so I very lightly blended this middle color onto my brow bone. And then I took this pink shade and I also blended it a little bit on the crease, um, and I also took this light shade and took it in the inner corner. So I tried using all five colors today. Oh, I'm sorry, I forgot to tell you. I also used the darkest shade with a very thin eyeliner brush along my lash line. And yes, I'm wearing fake lashes today. I, it's an experiment and I'm not enjoying it. So just in case you're wondering, these are not my natural lashes. Um, now, you don't need to use all five. You can for sure take just, I really like, using just this color by itself and just washing it all over the lid and being done with it. Um, I've also gotten more complicated. I've used the pink all over on, um, on the lid and this in the crease and that in the crease. I mean, there's so many combinations. It's very user friendly. It is an expensive palette. For that I apologize. But if you're looking to splurge or you don't have a huge makeup collection, buying one palette that you're gonna use probably for years before you hit pan, I think is worth the investment personally. And there's just something, I don't know. I think women 
of a certain age deserve to pamper themselves once in a while. We work hard. Whatever it is that we're doing, we are working hard at it and we deserve a little luxury in our lives. So, highly recommend this one. Huh. Okay, couple more palettes to show you. Um, for those of you that are past the basic stage, you want more than four, pal four or five shades, I get that. That's probably the majority of those of you that are watching this video. So my two go-to palettes that I think every woman should own. I really do. I, I just think these are fabulous. I've talked about them a ton, so this should come as no surprise. The first one gets a lot of love here on YouTube, from me included, and that's the Lorac Pro Palette. As you can see, mine is very well loved and smudged. And it has, you know, I'm not going to go into the whole thing. This row is matte. This row is shimmer. You, it's very neutral. None of these colors are offensive. Um, day, night, conservative office environment, not conservative office environment. There's something for everyone if you're a little more adventurous in choosing your colors. And then the other one that I've had for so long that they've since renamed the palette. It used to be called the Naturalized Palette, and now I think it's In the Light or Into the Light. It's the Stila, I think it's In the Light, whatever, palette. There's no mirror, which I actually really like. Um, and I tend to gravitate towards these shades here, but what I love about it is it has the matte highlight shade. It has a matte, I'm sorry, I don't mean to use that finger. It has a chipped nail, okay. It has a matte crease color, um, which you can use as a transition. And, um, and then it has a few shimmer shades. And if you want to avoid glitter, there's really only one here that's got glitter in it. And I find these to be fabulous. Now there was one last palette that I wanna talk about before I'm gonna show you my idea of the perfect palette. And this is this little bitty guy by Urban Decay, um, The Naked Basics. And when I first got this palette, I was completely underwhelmed and disappointed. But the more that I've used it, the more I've uh, come to love it. Uh, it's not perfect, but it's pretty useful. And it has your shimmery shade. It has your matte shades. It has your neutral colors. It's small. It's handy. And so I, very, I, I recommend this as well. But none of these were exactly what I was looking for, and it was making me a little bit crazy. And it was making my friends around me a little bit crazy, especially my friend Katie, as I would moan to her on the phone that I couldn't find the perfect palette. And um, I got on, I was talking to Kristen Game, and we were bouncing ideas off of each other, and that's a whole other side note. But it's really fun to have someone to bounce ideas off of, and so thank you, Kristen. Um, and I decided to go to MAC. And what I love about MAC is that you it's, the price point is reasonable, and you can pick exactly what you want. So like, you know, in this Stila palette, I probably will never wear this blue color, but it's there. And, you know, because the, they made the palette for me. But when you make a MAC palette, you pick exactly what you want. So I have picked six shades. I cheated, I know I said I only wanted four, but I was looking for a creamy bone matte brow bone highlight that could also be used as an inner corner highlight if you really wanted to. I wanted a lighter mid-tone brown matte to use as a transition slash crease color. I wanted a shimmery lid color that didn't have glitter. I wanted an additional darker brown shimmery color that you could use in the crease to kind of bring things up. And I wanted a darker brown color to use as an eyeliner for those that are uncomfortable using eyeliner pencil. So. I have a few um, a few <laughs> shades to show you. So for your, these are not in here well, for your matte brow bone shade, I love blank type. It is a, it's a little more pigmented than some of their other options. That's really packed on, but it's like the perfect beige. It's the same color as my pasty white skin. It's right there, it's perfect. It's also good for using with a really big fluffy brush to blend out any mistakes or if you've gone too far in the corner. I love that. For your transition, crease color. Love, love, love wedge so much that I made this very weird indentation in it. And that looks like this if you've never seen it before. Great for in the socket line, great for blending out a darker color if you've, did a, if you've put a dark color on the lid and now you wanna blend it out a little. It's just fabulous. Now, lid colors, I cheated. I couldn't pick one or the other. Um, and two that I love, the first one is Naked Lunch. And it's a shimmery, it has a pinkish cast to it, but it's not too much. Looks like that. And I'll try swatching it on the skin. See, it's very subtle, you can't even see it. It's just a gleam, which I think is really pretty on an older eye. And if you wanted something with, 
This is my personal favorite, but, um, and I have made quite a divot in it, and I don't know if you can see it, is grain. Grain is one of those overlooked, beautiful colors. It has a sheen to it. It's skin tone, though. Skin, yes, skin tone. And it just has a little more, where did it go? A little more pigmentation than Naked Lunch, I think. And I, I love it. It just brightens up your eyes and makes you look awake. As far as in the crease colors that are shimmery but a little darker, I couldn't make up my mind. So I picked one that's more cool toned and one that's more warm toned. Um, my warm tone one and my favorite one is Sable. I just, it was, I think, the first matte color that I bought, and it looks like that. And it's also great just all over the lid and blend it out. And looks like that. Isn't that pretty? And then, of course, the classic for those of you who like cool toned is Satin Taupe, which is right here. And if you haven't seen it before, looks like that. It's a it, it runs differently, I've noticed, on different people. On me, it has a distinctly purple cast to it when I put it on my eyelid, but it's sort of a cool taupe. And there it is next to Sable. So satin taupe there and Sable here. And then lastly, we decided, we, this group of us that were bouncing ideas around, thought you needed a darker matte toned brown to either deepen your outer corner, use as an eyeliner, or what have you. And the one that I picked, because I thought it could run cool or warm, depending on what it's paired with, is Foley, which is, no. Well, this isn't Foley, but I don't own Foley. But I picked Foley. I have Corduroy, which is distinctly warm toned, but it's in the same general pigmentation level. So I bet you're wondering, why aren't you showing me Foley? There it is. If you don't have it, why are you talking about it? Well, I do have it right here. And I also have Naked Lunch and I have Blank Type and I have Wedge and I have Satin Taupe and I have Sable and I have an empty Z palette with the magnets if you need them. And I don't need these because I own all of these. But someone, someone out there, one of you, needs this. So, it's yours. It's open to anyone, no matter where in the world you live. The usual rules apply. You must be subscribed. You must be over 18. If you're under 18, I'm going to need permission from your parents. We'll worry about that later once you win. Um, I will announce in the next grown-ass woman's video who won it. Of course, like I said, this isn't just for women of a certain age. So if, if you're under 18 and you're just getting into makeup, these are great basics to have as well. It's, it's not just for those of us who are grown as women. Um, so I'm, I'm just, I'm so excited that I'm sure I'm forgetting to tell you something important. But um, I can't wait to send this off to somebody. I can't wait to hear what you think of this. And um, I'm, I will probably do some demonstration videos to accompany this stuff later, but I just realized that I've talked so much that there's, I just don't want to do, I don't want to add to the length of this by throwing in some demonstrations as well. So I'll do some follow-up videos with demonstrations later. How about that? Thanks again. Thank you so much for watching. Please let me know what you think of this, and um, I'll see you in the next video. Thank you so much for watching. Bye-bye.